In this video, simple camera hacks I use when photographing the moon. And hack number three is my favorite because it focuses on the most important thing. And if you get this right, people will absolutely love your photos. Even if you kind of suck and make some serious mistakes, like sadly I did on this particular night. For example, this photo was rejected by a popular stock photography site mentioning noise, grain, artifacts, and more. And yet that same photo was liked, commented, and shared on social media hundreds of times. So let's jump in, I've got a lot to share. Hack number one, a full moon is fantastic. However, I found that a moon that's almost full is better. Why? Simple, contrast between the shadows and the highlights. Shadows create a visually pleasing image and actually the image looks sharper and crisper. There's just more detail because there's more things to pop and stand out. And hack number two is to get creative with the color of your photo by leveraging manual white balance in camera. Let me show you, this is pretty interesting. Here you can see I'm getting ready to shoot the Denver City skyline from Sloan's Lake. Now, this is the actual photo I took. It's so blue, and that's based on the Kelvin temperature. Again, I set manually in camera. Here's one image with different Kelvin white balance temperatures. This one has got a warmer temperature, and the Kelvin is set to 4800. Here's the same exact image, and this time, the Kelvin value is way down to 3400. The lower the number, the more cool the image will be. The higher, the warmer the image will be. Typically, you can find this setting in the exposure settings of your camera's menu system. And hack number three is to create visually pleasing images by nailing the composition. And my experience has been, even when I screw up, and look, like I know a lot of these photos aren't the most amazing photos in the world, but as an amateur photographer, when I get this right, people respond, and thus it's the thing I really try to do well at. And back in the day when I got started with full moon photography, I pointed my camera up to the sky, I would take a picture, and the result was a photo that's kind of sterile. A black image with a white ball in the center, and nothing more to really look at. Now, these photos are, they're pleasing, but I believe when you capture the moon, when it's near the horizon, you can add so much more interest to the image. And furthermore, technically speaking, these images are a lot easier to create because we've got light working in our favor. As the moon rises, the photography becomes really challenging because of dynamic range issues. So our human eyes, we, we can see about 30 or so stops of light. We can see detail in the shadows and we can see detail in highlights as well but a camera can only see about half of that. So this is a top of the line Sony A1 and it can see about 15 stops of dynamic range, which means often the full moon will be blown out, but when it's first rising, when the moon is rising, it's not as bright and it's just a lot easier to create a pleasing image. For example, these three images were taken just three minutes apart and notice how much darker it gets and yet I actually increased the shutter speed from eight tenths of a second to a full second for the last two photos to capture more light, but at the cost of a sharp moon because the moon is moving. So the longer the shutter is open, the less likely you're gonna get a really crisp image of the moon. However, that's not really the hack in hack number three. I mentioned creating visual interest. And what I've learned over the last few years is by incorporating one or two special elements into the frame, it just adds so much to the image or picture. Let me give you a great example. This is again Sloan's Lake, a really nice symmetrical image taken at golden hour sunrise. And this is nearly the same photo, but I waited for a runner, I snapped the photo, and I was thinking rule of thirds as I took this particular image. And here's that full moon photo I mentioned, same location, and we have several special elements. Number one, we've got the city skyline, one, We've got the harvest moon right above the city skyline, that special element number two. And then lastly, we have reflections from the city skyline in Sloan's Lake. 
three special elements to create something that's visually pleasing. Tip number four, leverage photo pills to help you plan out these types of shots, whether you wanna photograph a full moon, a sunrise, a sunset, maybe a crescent moon or a meteor shower, fantastic app that allows you to really see where the moon or the subject, so maybe the sun or the moon is gonna be in regards to a subject, a foreground subject like the city skyline. One of the things I did a few years ago when I started doing this type of photography is I'd get to a location a day before, I'd snap a photo of the city skyline, and then I kind of mapped out the different buildings so I could really plan. Because when you start getting into uh, big zoom lenses, you often can't fit in the entire city skyline. It's one building and a huge monster moon. Uh, keep watching for some tips about how to create really dramatic images. Tip number five is to always shoot in RAW. I mentioned the technical difficulties when we're talking about photography and dynamic range. The thing you can do to help you out a bit is to shoot in RAW because you get more leeway when editing and adjusting light values like highlights, midtones, and shadows uh, when you're using an app like Lightroom. Hack number six is to create really dramatic looking photos with a big huge moon in the frame. And, and the way to add some of that camera magic is to get the foreground subject, the city skyline, really far away from the photographer. The more distance, well then obviously, the smaller that subject's gonna be in the frame. Now I've seen amazing photos from photographers in New York where they can get like 25 miles away from city buildings and then they get this crazy alignment with the moon. Here in Denver, I can't get any further than maybe 10 miles away because then I enter the foothills and the mountains and I can't get a view of the city skyline. And now what I like to do is extend the zoom to get really close and to blow up the moon. And to do that, I start with a teleconverter. This is a two times teleconverter. Thus, 600 millimeters times two is now 1200 millimeters. And by shooting full frame, I can crop in camera, which will increase the zoom by 1.5 times. So 1200 times 1 1.5, I think that brings us to 1800 millimeters. And if you're shooting on a Sony camera, you can actually use clear image zoom to zoom in two times, 1800 millimeters times two, I'm pretty sure that's 3600 millimeters, and that's how this particular photo was taken. Uh, the clear image zoom is not like a typical zoom on other cameras that you'll see. It's actually pretty darn good. Now, there's lots of things wrong with this particular photo, and yet people really responded to it. I think just the size of the moon, the fact that it was going underneath the foothills, created a cool look, and that's the thing I want you to think about. It's not always about creating the clearest, sharpest image. Um, for example, when you add a teleconverter, you actually degrade just how sharp the lens is. But if you wanna get close to an eagle in flight, it's a lot better, in my opinion, to get really zoomed in rather than to have the sharpest image. Hey, thank you so much if you made it this far. I really appreciate it. If you wanna check out another video, it's on the screen now. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing that. And I'll see you on the next video. You dig?